What is your name, please? My name is Santa Claus. What is your name, please? My name is Santa Claus. What is your name, please? My name is Santa Claus. Only two of these people are imposters. One of them is really entitled to call himself Santa Claus and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. And here is our host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much. Good evening and welcome once again to To Tell the Truth, brought to you each week by Geritol, America's number one tonic, the high-potency tonic that helps you feel stronger fast. Now may I introduce our panel. What is your name, please? My name is Polly Bergen. My name is John Cameron Swayze. My name is Celeste Holmes. And my name is High Gardner. Well, panel, here's something for April Fool's Day. These three gentlemen all claim to have the right to call themselves Santa Claus. Only one, of course, has that right. The other two have merely assumed that identity, and they're the ones that do not have to stick to the truth. May I ask you to find your copies of this first affidavit and follow along as I read it. I, Robert J. George, am vice president and general manager of Santa's Slays Incorporated. Before I became a full-time Santa Claus, I spent six years as a professional barber and two and a half years as an army cook. I have appeared as Santa for more than two million children and adults. For the past two years, I have played Santa Claus at the White House for President and Mrs. Eisenhower. Signed, Robert J. George. All right, panel, as you heard, these three gentlemen all claim to be Robert J. George, presidential Santa Claus, I believe we might call him. Only the real Robert J. George is sworn to answer your questions truthfully, and you will each question as usual until you hear this signal. At the end of the questioning period, you'll be asked to cast your vote for the one who, in your opinion, is the real one. So let's start tonight with Polly Bergen. Polly? Thank you, bud. Um, number one, would you say ho, 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 please? Ho, 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 ho. <laughs> not bad. Uh, number two, it says that you were a professional barber for six years. Uh, is there a certain amount of education required before you can get a license to be a barber? Six months at barber college. I see. Uh, number three, do you have to have a high school education to be a barber? No, you do not. Uh, where are you from, number three? What I state? am from Columbus, Nebraska. Uh, number one, uh, you go to barber school. How long do you have to go to barber school, number one? Six months. Six months? Um, who do you practice on in barber school? Usually bums. Are they pardon? <laughs> Usually bums. Bums? Uh, John Cameron Swayze. Nothing meant by that, John. You understand. Number two, in your days as a barber, did you ever shave off a beard? No. Number three, who wrote The Night Before Christmas? I do not know. Number one, do you know? Mr. Moore. What's the correct Clement title? C. Moore. Uh, that's right. What's the correct title, number one? A Night with St. Nicholas. Number two, where do you specifically perform at the White House? In the front of the White House, in a piece of land called the Ellipse. Number... The last? Um... Number three, uh, I'd like to hear him say ho, ho, ho. All right. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. <laughs> <laughs> now, what is, um, what does it say on the after? Santa Slays Incorporated. <clears throat> what is that? Santa Slays Incorporated is a company that has five mechanical slays that operate in ten states. Five mechanical slays that operate in ten states? Yes, sir. I see. Um, tell me, um, number one, do you have to have references to get to be an army cook? No, you do not. I see. Uh, <laughs> do you just go ahead or do they train you? <laughs> no, you're pointed at. <laughs> pointed at. That's the way you're picked. Hi. Uh, number two, what son of what famous president uh, sold Christmas trees as a business, more or less? I do not know. Would you know number three? 
I do not know. Would you know number one? Elliot Roosevelt. Uh, number two, uh, where is the school for Santa Claus is located? There is no school for Santa Claus. What would you say to that, number three? I do not know. Uh, number two, again, in what state in the Union is there a town named Santa Claus? I do not know. Uh, well, that's it, panel. It's time to vote. So without consultation, will you please mark your ballots? And in so doing, select number one, number two, or number three. The team of challengers will receive $250 for every incorrect vote. All set, Polly? I think so. For whom did you vote? <clears throat> I vote for number one, mainly because I... He didn't answer, I don't know, as many times as the other two. <laughs> and also, because I think if I were a child, I would want to believe he was the real Santa Claus. Oh, oh very nice. Yeah. John Cameron? Well, I stuck with Polly on that. I voted for number one. I liked his ho-ho-ho, Polly. And yeah, he also I thought he was pretty good at that, too. He also knew who wrote The Night Before Christmas. And, uh, Celeste Holm, what was your choice? Well, I voted for number three because I thought he didn't want me to think he was the real Santa <laughs> Little deception there, hi? Yes. <laughs> well, I voted for number two because despite all the I don't know, as I figured that uh, April is uh, Santa Claus is out of season anyway, you know? <laughs> so I went along with two. All right, let's see who went along with what in the right way now as we discover which one of these three gentlemen is the real presidential Santa Claus. So will the real Robert J. George please stand up. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. All right, now, let's uh, find out whatever surprises we have in store for us here. Number one, would you tell us who you really are and what you really do, please? My name is Jim Moran. I'm in the publicity business, and when you're in New York, be sure to see Lena Horne in Jamaica. <laughs> Now, Polly, get ready. Number two, what about you, sir? My name is oh, Rich Miller. I make records, and I'm on the radio for Columbia. <laughs> I know. And I wouldn't for a million years have recognized either one of them. Well, you probably never thought of them as Santa Claus before. Well, that's true. <laughs> Well, yes, I. But can we get them to remove their beards, or are they going on another show? <laughs> <laughs> no, they'll be fighting before. You might as well take yours off and let us see what you look like, too, if you'd like to join the throng here. And in the meantime, I'll check up the tallies here. You find that there was only one correct vote, which means three incorrect at $250 each for a total of $750 from Jared Hall. Gentlemen, hope you had fun. We did. Good night, and uh, Merry Christmas in July. <laughs> What is your name, please? My name is Jack Kelly, Jr. What is your name, please? My name is Jack Kelly, Jr. What is your name, please? My name is Jack Kelly, Jr. All right, panel, got your copies of the affidavit? If so, please follow along. I, Jack Kelly, Jr., am treasurer of a masonry contracting company in Philadelphia. In 1953, I won the Apprentice Bricklaying Championship of Pennsylvania. I have several other championships to my credit. For eight years, I was the singles rowing champion of the United States. I also have held the Pan American, Royal Henley, and European Championships. I represented the United States in three Olympics. In 1947, I won the Sullivan Award as the Outstanding Amateur Athlete in the United States. Signed, Jack Kelly, Jr. <laughs> now, as you heard, panel, these three gentlemen all claim to be Jack Kelly, Jr., rowing champion. So we'll begin the cross-examination tonight on this round with Celeste Holmes. Celeste? Number two, are you Grace Kelly's brother? Yes, I am. 
Um, can you, um, would you like to, uh, let's see, number three, would you please, uh, see if you can name, uh, Grace Kelly's full title? Her full title, uh, I don't recall exactly. I address my letters to her as Prince Grace of uh, de Monaco. I see. Now, um, your uncle, the playwright, uh, wrote a Pulitzer Prize play, number one. Uh, what was the name of that play and his name? That was my uh, Uncle George, and he wrote Craig's Wife. And uh, number two, I believe that... Um, didn't you have an uncle in Bodeville? And uh, what was the name of the character that he played? It was my uncle Walter. He was known, I think, in the vaudeville circuit as the Virginia Judge. Hi, Gard. Uh, number two, what did the Virginia Judge do for a vaudeville act? What was he? What was his specialty? Number two? Number two, yes. Oh, uh, he was a monologist. Uh, he um, played all the parts of a court scene. Uh -huh. Number number three, uh, you live in Philadelphia. Who is a fellow named Jerry Gagan? Jerry Gagan is uh, one of the assemblymen, uh, the National Assemblyman. Mm -hmm. Did you know number two? Yes, he's a columnist. Uh -huh. Number one, uh, why was your father doubly proud of your winning the singles rowing championship? Well, I think you're referring to the uh, the diamonds which he was not able to compete in when he was the age that mm -hmm. I wanted at. Uh, no. Molly? Uh, number one, um, does the um, title Poor Richard mean anything to you? Benjamin Franklin. Number two, does the title Poor Richard mean anything to you? I believe it's Benjamin Franklin. Uh, number three, uh, when did George Breckenridge win the Sullivan Award? What year? George uh, Breckenridge won the Sullivan Award in 1953. Number one, could you tell me the year? I think it was about 1953. Uh, number two, um, <clears throat> how many bricks do you have to lay to win a championship of fantasy? Well, it's not based on the number that you lay, but rather with which the accuracy with which you lay them. Oh, uh, it isn't, you don't have to do so many in a certain no, amount you, of time? You do it over a fixed period of time, usually around two hours. Oh, I see. John? Uh, number one, what union did you belong to when you were laying brick? I belonged to the BM and PIUOA. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> number two, when was the brick laying championship held? Well, we had a local contest in our own local union, and then we went on to the state contest, and then eventually to the national contest. Number three, any other member of your family adept at laying brick? Uh, yes, my father is quite adept at brick laying. Number two, in rowing, when you feather an oar, what do you do? Well, that's usually done on the recovery of the stroke. It's, uh, your oar more or less goes on its back and skims along the water. What part of the arm has the greatest strain put upon it? Greatest strain in the arm? I don't know where it would hurts me the most. Uh... <laughs> well, that's it. Time once again to vote. So once again, panel, will you mark your ballots and select number one, number two, or number three? Hi, Polly, you're fast tonight. For whom did you vote this time? I voted for number two hmm? because I asked number three and number one what year George Breckenridge won the Sullivan Award, and I made up the name. And they told me. You didn't ask number two. I know, but number one and number three told me when he won it, and he couldn't have won it because I made it up. <laughs> Why ask number two? <laughs> you win, John. Your vote, please. Number two, I like the general way you answer the question. And Celeste, your selection? I chose number two because last week I tried to use my head and this week I decided not to. <laughs> <laughs> and hi, your choice. Well, I, I also selected number two, primarily, I think, because he doesn't look the least bit like Grace Kelly. <laughs> you mean you never saw Grace in a crew? No, he had all the answers as far as I was concerned. concerning. All right. Idea. There you have it now. Let's see how well you did it. You're guessing along at home with us. Because most of this is based on guessing, and the last analysis, okay. try as we will to judge, let's find out which one of these gentlemen is the real rowing champion. So will the real Jack Kelly, Jr., please stand up. <laughs> Thank you.
you, sir, very much. And a unanimous choice you were. That's the first time panel scored 100% in quite a while. Number one, would you tell us who you really are and what you do? My name is Art Meyer, and I write all the on-the-air promotion for WCBS Radio. <laughs> And number three, what about you, sir? My name is Major Keith Garrison, and I'm a jet pilot with the United States Air Force. Well, as you see, it was unanimous, which means there were no incorrect votes, but from Geritol, gentlemen, $150 for you to divide. Hope you enjoyed being here. We enjoyed having you. Good night, and the best of good luck to you. Thank you. Challengers, <laughs> please. What is your name, please? My name is Nora White. What is your name, please? My name is Doris White. What is your name, please? My name is Doris White. Once again, panel, may I direct your attention to your copies of this affidavit as I read it. I, Dr. Doris White, am an associate professor at a state teacher's college and hold the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. As a student, I majored in poultry husbandry, and I am an expert on chickens, ducks, turkeys, and geese. I am the only active, licensed woman poultry show judge in the United States. Signed, Dr. Doris White. All right, panel, these three ladies all claim to be Dr. Doris White, poultry judge. We'll start this round with High Gardner. Hi. Number three, uh, what was the title of uh, philosopher Will Durant's first selling book, his great selling book? I'm afraid I don't remember that. Uh, would you know number two? I don't recall. Number one? I don't remember either. Yeah, at what age, number one, does a turkey learn to swim? Turkeys don't swim. Uh, number two, uh, what happens to chickens in a bad storm and uh, if there's thunder or some other uh, freak of nature? Well, they seek cover. Uh, number three, what would you say? I would agree, they seek cover. And what would you say, number one? Would you please repeat that question? Uh, what happens to chickens when there's a peal of thunder or some great excitement or noise? I think they get scared. <laughs> uh, number one, what they famous... chicken out, huh? <laughs> Boy, that's foul. Uh, number, one, uh, number one, what famous uh, comedian uh, is, is practically the largest breeder and, and distributor of, of uh, pheasant, pheasants uh, in the East? I'm sorry, I don't know. Do you know number two? Molly? Would you know number two? <laughs> Victor Gorga. Uh, number two, what kind of chickens lay brown eggs? Uh, chickens which have the brown earlobes. I see. Uh, well... <laughs> chickens have ears? Oh, definitely, yes. Uh. <laughs> Are there any particular uh, breed, uh, though, that run more toward brown eggs than others? Well, definitely, yes. Uh, for instance, uh, your Rock Islands would have brown eggs. Thank you. Uh, John? Something uh. I recognize, at least. <laughs> uh. Number two, are the fetus, chickens and ducks, turkeys and geese, all different? No. No. They're all the same? Some of them are similar. Well, now, uh, which you said ones are all. different? Well, uh, are for instance, like they, are, they are alike in as much as they have three anterior and one posterior. I see. In the see. structure of the feet. Uh, I see. <laughs> I see. Yes. How do you judge? <laughs> Number two, how do you judge a chicken at a poultry show? What are uh, the points? Well, it um, has mostly to do with the overall size, the uh, firmness, the uh, shape. Number three, describe the coloring of a Canadian goose. The Canadian goose is multicolored. Thank you. The last. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, number one, could you give me the background? That is, the, the I understand the Cornish hens, which Mr. Borga breeds, are a cross between something and something. Uh, can you give me the um, 
background of a Cornish hen. What did you say was the cross he had? Uh, uh, Mr. Borgus hands? Mr. Borgus hands. Victor Borgus hands. <laughs> By Borgus hands. Oh, it's a lovely plug. Yes. Uh, it is. Are called rock Cornish hands. Oh, well, then they'd be across the rocks the Cornish. <laughs> <laughs> the vote. I'm sorry. Without any further consultation, will you please mark your ballot? But the reason, the yes, reason they, they're, they're cross is because Victor doesn't feed them enough. <laughs> that would make any, would make any Cornish heads cross. All right. In selecting now, will you choose number one, number two, or number three? You're real fast tonight, Polly. For whom did you vote this time? Well, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> there was no doubt in my mind that it was number two, but I wrote down number three, which I didn't mean to, so I tried to cover it up. But two, I feel firmly, is, yeah. you crossed is the, the three one, with a two. Because I figure, who else would make up a mirror on a chicken? How can we feel? John Cameron Swayze, your choice. Well, I please. chose number two also. I like the way she handled that technical language, almost as if it were second nature to her. All right, Celeste. Well, I'm not a bit sure what I'm doing, but I I voted for number two because um, I'm not sure why, but it seemed like a good idea. Okay, hi. <laughs> well, I don't know anything about chickens excepting eating them occasionally, and, and I've never seen any brown lobe chickens, so you lost me with that. I voted for number one. All right, there you have it now, the way we voted. Let's see how we voted as compared to the way you voted at home. Watch closely now as we discover which one of these three ladies is the real poultry judge. So will the real Dr. Doris White please stand up. <laughs> Number two, would you tell us who you really are and what you do? I'm Major Josephine Redanius, United States Women's Army Corps Recruiting Officer. Number three, what about you? My name is Jean Mikowski, and I work for the Nassau County Children's Court as a probation officer. Now, I'd like to ask a question quickly. Number one, what about this earlobe bit? Well, actually, birds that have white earlobes do lay white eggs. Those with red earlobes lay brown eggs. See there is there a distinct now? correlation. The Mediterranean breeds have the white earlobes, and they notoriously lay the white eggs. The others, in general, lay brown eggs. See there? <laughs> you never know what you have. Well, we see that we have... Earlobe lately, bud? <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing like a puree of fresh chicken earlobes, believe me. <laughs> and you have three incorrect votes at $250 each for a total of $750 from Geritol. Thanks very much, ladies. Thank good night, and good luck to you. Thanks. Plus, that's all the time we have for tonight, except for some quick travel notes. First, we want to thank Celeste for sitting in with us for these two weeks. I think it was very appropriate having me on April Fool's Day. Uh, we enjoyed having you here, believe me. <laughs> and also to announce that Kitty will be back from Europe next week. And uh, let's see, Hi will be off for Europe next week for a couple of weeks. And sitting in his chair for him will be Jim Backus. So have a good trip, Hi. Thanks, bud. And my usual reminder to you, don't forget, Polly's show on Saturday night. That's Robbie, and I hope you will be, too. And now, good night, panel. Good night, good night Bud. Bud. Good night, Bud. And now, this is Bud Collier saying good night from Geritol and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> to tell the truth is Markinson Bill Cogman production in association with the CBS Television Network. Miss Bergen's Gone by Florence Luster.